Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. I have a new idea so that anybody can be successful in any sort of standardized math exam. We're gonna go right back to the beginning. I'm gonna do a series of videos that's gonna walk you through all of that math that you might have missed in school, maybe you weren't paying attention, whatever the reason. I'm gonna go from the beginning all the way to the end so you can be successful on any standardized math exam. The way you get good at anything is by practice. The way you learn how to juggle, is practice. The way you get good at math is practice. So you got to do a lot of problems. So it's going to be a very interactive video. You need to pause it when I go too fast. Maybe fast forward when I go too slow. You have to have a notebook and a pencil out and you need to do the problems. I'm going to make these notes available to you. The process of actually taking the notes is what helps make it all make sense. So if you have these notes right here, you're gonna print this out, take all your notes here, and then there are gonna be practice problems down below. You're gonna pause the video, do the problems before I do them. Not only are you looking for understanding, but you're also looking to do enough practice so they come to you pretty quick without a calculator. I'm gonna go right to the very beginning so that we're all starting at the same place. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with addition and subtraction. Let me introduce a couple big ideas that are gonna go through all of these videos. They're gonna take you all the way through elementary school math, all the way to kind of the end of high school math. Everything starts right here on what's called the number line. We're gonna eventually label that number line X, and that's gonna be our unknown variable, and that's gonna get us into algebra. Right now, we're just gonna point, point on that number line zero, and from that zero, if we go to the left, we're going negative. If we go to the right, we're going positive. The way you add and subtract is you kind of have this thing in your mind uh, and you figure out which way you're going. If you're subtracting, you're going to the left. If you're adding, you're going to the right. That's how easy it is. It's like clockwise, counterclockwise. From addition and subtraction, we're going to add a new axion here, the y-axis. And then rather than look at addition and subtraction, we're going to look at multiplication. So if I have a two by two box, two times two is four, I'm going to have four squares. So we're going to keep building on this. We're eventually going to build into three dimensionals. We're going to add a z-axis, and we're going to look at volume and geometry. But right now, all we're talking about is adding, subtracting, in one dimension, only the x-axis. Yeah, I've redrawn the number line here a little bit bigger. Again, this is a really big idea. Um, we're going to look at numbers, adding and subtracting. We're also going to split that single unit to find our fractions, decimals, all of that still on a number line. We add that y-axis to get area for multiplication and division. We start putting coordinates on this Cartesian coordinate plane, uh, drawing lines between those coordinates, looking at slope, graphing lines, introducing the idea of algebra because if we don't know where we are on the number line, we call it x. So this is the basis where we're starting from. This is what so much of high school math is based on. So let's just take a look at addition here. If I have three plus five, this is saying where I start. I start here. I move five units, one, one, two, three, four, five, and I end at eight. That's how it works. Plus means go to the right, minus means go to the left. If I have three minus two, that's saying start here, move that away one, two, and end at one. One, two, ending at one. If I have four minus seven, that's saying you start right here at four. I go left that away, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I end at negative three. If I have negative three, plus four, saying you start right here, you go to the right four, one, two, three, four, and you end at one. If I have negative five minus two, that's saying I start at negative five, and I go to the left two, so I start at negative five, minus says I go this way, one, two, that means I end it's not working. I end right here at negative seven. Negative five minus, meaning going to the left, ending at negative seven. If you want to be able to run those numbers really fast in your head, I could try and keep that imagery in my, 
in my mind when I'm doing long addition and subtraction, again, all of this without a calculator, let's go ahead and do some practice problems. So again, hopefully, either you have a notebook, you write this out, and then you take all your notes be before, or you've printed this document out, and then you take your notes on it, and then do the problems below. So I have a series of addition problems here. Pause the video, do these really quick. In my head, I'm looking at that number line, I'm starting at seven, I'm going over five to end at 12. Here I'm starting at nine, I go over to the right, three units, also ending at 12. Starting at six, going over four, ending at 10, eight plus six, I go eight plus two gets me to 10, four more gets me to 14. I mean, I've done a lot of this practice, so it's pretty quick in my head. The way you gotta do it is you gotta keep seeing that number line and practice, practice, practice until you could do these pretty quick in your head. Here's some more problems getting a little harder. 12 plus nine, 21. If you can't see that, you gotta go 12 plus 10, 22, back one from 10 to nine. 15 plus eight, I see that is 23. I also see eight is made up of a five and a three. So five and 15 is 20, and the three more is 23. Here I'm gonna add my tens together to get 20. Then I'm gonna add my four and my one together to get five, so I get 25. 23, 23. Here's some more challenging problems right here. Now here, um, I'm starting to get to double digits, so I'm thinking of ways I could combine these. I take 19, I go up one to 20. 20 and 24 is 44, but I added that extra one in, so I gotta subtract one to get 43. Or I go nine and four is 13. Carry that one to get two plus one plus one, 43. 37 and 28, I could do the three and the two to get 50. The seven and the eight to get 15. 50 and 15 is 65. I know I'm going quick here, and we jump right from that number line to doing quick addition. You got to do these through practice and start to get them playing with those numbers in your head. And then from there, once you're really good with numbers in your head, then we'll be able to move on to all sorts of high school level math, algebra, and geometry. But until you start seeing these on that number line going left for subtraction, right for addition, it's hard to see how the algebra and the harder math comes together. 45 and 36. I'm gonna add these together to get 70 plus 11, 81. So this is 81. Right here, it's a pretty hard one. Eight and nine is 17. Five and two is seven. So 50 and 20 is 70. 70 and that 17 is 87. After this page, I got the solution. So you could pause that video, do them all. Check your work below that. Let's go to subtraction. Okay, here we are on the subtraction problems. We're still on that number line. Minus means go to the left, so I'm starting at 14. I go over to the left, 14 minus six is eight. 10 minus four, starting over here, going back four, puts me at six. 25 minus nine, if that's kind of hard to see on that number line, maybe do 25 minus 10. So I start at 25, I go all the way over to 15, but I don't want to subtract 10, I want to subtract nine, so I gotta go back to the right one, so that's gonna be 16. 33 minus 15, same thing, I'm gonna do like 30 minus 15, so now I'm changing that number to get 15, but I gotta remember, I'm three more to the right, so I'm at 18. 33 minus 15 is 18, 18 plus 15 is 33, that's my check. Seven minus the one is six, two minus the one is one, 27 minus 11, 16. And I, I don't expect you to get here this quick. What I'm hoping you'll do is you're starting to run these numbers in your head, seeing that number line, I'm starting here and I'm going to the left, how far am I going to the left? I'm going to the left by that amount. 42 minus 18, I'm gonna do 42 minus 20. That's gonna put me at 22, but I went over 20. I don't wanna go over 20, I wanna go over 18. So even though it puts me at 22, I gotta go back to the right two, 24. 36 minus 22, 
that's going to be 14. Again, pause the video, do these before I do them. There's some hard ones, 58 minus 29. 58 minus 30 is 28. I don't want to subtract 30, I only want to subtract 29. So 58 minus 29, 28, 29. 73 minus 36, uh, that's pretty hard to do. Let's do 73 minus 40. All right, so I'm starting way over here at 73. I'm minus 40. That's going to put me at 33. But then I got to add four more to it, the difference between 40 and, and 36. So 73 minus that 40 puts me at 33 plus 4, 37. So nope. here are three word problems. I really like to mark these things up. Write down whatever I can, circle key points. Jenny has eight apples and buys five more apples. That right there is telling you it's addition. Eight plus five is 13. The school has 125 students in the morning session and 134 students in the afternoon. How many students are there in total? That's telling you to add right there. 125 and 134. Uh, that might be a little hard to do in your head. If you write it out like this, you could do it that way. And then what you're doing here, you could do that in your head too. Five and four is nine. Two and three is five. One and one is two, 259. In the library, there are 245 books, 189 books. The library buys 137 more fiction books how many fiction books will there be? So this right here is only a distractor. So this is kind of a hard thing to figure out. This number is only put in there to distract you. In the library, there are 245 fiction books. It buys 137 more fiction books. How many fiction books are there? So this isn't math as much as uh, decoding the sentence. So I got 245 and 137, 245, 137. And again, you got to do this quickly so you could add these. 5 and 7 is 12. Carry the 1. 3 and 4, 7. Plus 1, 8. 2 and 1, 3. 382 is the correct answer right there. All right, some word problems and subtraction. Again, pause the video and do these problems before I do them. A lot of it's really just de decoding the English. Also, you need a channel to think about subscribing, and please comment on what you think of this idea for a video, that I have these pages you could print out. I'm going to go through all of the ideas in math from really the beginning to about the middle end of high school, so you could be successful on a standardized math exam. It'll also help you pretty much in any sort of quantitative decision making, whether you're buying a house, buying a car, have a job, running these numbers in your head through practicing is really going to help you out. All right, so on this one right here, Tom has 15 candies. He gives seven candies to his friend. How many does he have left? That's the key word to let you know it's subtraction. 15 minus 7 is 8. Sarah has $75. She spends, that's going to be subtracting, 29 on a dress. How much does she have left? Again, subtraction, 75 minus 29. You might be able to do that in your head. 75 minus 30 is 45, but I took one more than 29. So around 35, it'd be 36. If you want to write it out here, you won't make any mistakes. Check your work. You're going to borrow 10 from here. That's going to give you a 6, right? That's 70 becomes 60. That's 10 units. You add those 10 units to that 5. 15 minus 9 is 6. 6 minus 2 is 46. How many dollars do you have left? $46. A factory produced 1,250 toys in June. In July, the production decreased by 458. Again, that's the word telling you subtraction. How many were produced in July? So I've got to do this minus this. I don't know if I do that in my head. I'm going to write this one out, 1250 minus the 458, 0 minus 8, I can't do that. So I have to borrow 10 from here. This becomes a 40. 
I got 10 minus 8 is 2. 4 minus 5, I can't do that. I got to borrow 100 here. So I'm going to borrow 100 here. This becomes 100. Now this right here becomes 140. 140 minus 5 is 9. Uh, 11 minus 4, I could do that to get 7. Or I could borrow 1,000 here to give me 11 here. 11 minus 4, 792. How many toys were produced in July? Correct answer, 792 right there. All right, well, I sure hope this video is helpful. I know it's hard to go back to step one, but I think if you do, you'll be able to progress forward um, throughout all your math and be successful on any standardized math test. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build a playlist of all of this. And again, if this is super easy and you could run these numbers, either just skip this video, fast forward through it, or just go to the next one. All right, thank you for watching.